Hello, everybody. My name is Johan de Seger. I'm a nematologist at the University of Florida, based at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. And I will be talking to you about uh, chemical and non-chemical nematode management in vegetables and strawberries. So a brief outline of my talk. I'll cover a little bit uh, the research we did here at the GCREC Research Farm on cover crops. I'll be talking also about some nematicide trials we did in growers field on tomato and cucurbits. And then briefly, I'll, I'll finish with talking a little bit about our more recent organic strawberry research here at the Gulf Coast, uh, looking at different cultivars and steam treatment of transplant. So first, uh, we did some cover crop trials here in uh, last year, spring, summer 2020. Uh, this was right around the time COVID hit. We just had them planted before, and we had really nice stands, as you can see, some pictures here. We planted sun hemp, sorghum Sudan grass, cowpea, sunflower, vetch, and natural fallow, which was a wheat fallow. The vetch, unfortunately, didn't grow well, got choked out by the wheat, so um, I won't be talking much about that. So these were large strips. These were um, about 350 foot long plots by 25 foot wide. So here's the nematode root infections that we found on the cover crop roots at the end of the trial in summer. Um, we see some of the cover crops. We did find some uh, root galls, uh, like on cow peas and especially sunflower. We did not see any galls, uh, nematode root galls on sorghum, sedan, sun hemp. Um, we also extracted nematodes from the roots, and you can see um, we found root knot and root lesion nematodes. We found a lot of root knot nematodes in the sunflower roots. Uh, we found very little in the cowpea roots, despite the fact that we saw galls. Um, on the other hand, the sorghum and the sun hemp did have some reasonable numbers of root lesion nematodes in there, which we did not find or hardly found in the cowpeas and uh, sunflower. This, is the, this slide shows you the nematode salt counts uh, pre-plant and at the end of the trial. So we had some reasonable numbers of root knot before we planted. Uh, no significant difference with any of the treatment. We also had some root lesion already in there, some stubby root nematodes and also some dagger nematodes. So a fairly diverse plant parasitic nematode population to start with. At the end of the trial, um, root knot pretty much increased in most of the cover crops, especially in the sunflower as you can see, uh, also in the fallow, um, where it decreased uh, was the sun hemp. Uh, so sun hemp, poor host to root knot, this is what you would expect. And that was really, uh, we also saw actually a dis uh, reduction in the cowpea, which is interesting. So it did show some galls, but apparently it didn't allow much reproduction of this uh, species or combination of species of root knot nematodes. We still have to ID the species that we have in this field, but it looks like it's a mixed population. Um, root lesion was quite different, so we found very low numbers in all the cover crop except for sun hemp. Now, sun hemp is known to be a pretty good host for lesion nematodes. Uh, stubby root was the highest in the Sudan grass um, and pretty low in all the other cover crops. And then dagger nematodes kind of decreased uh, for all the cover crops, so we didn't find many at the end of the trial. So after the cover crops, uh, we planted a, a tomato crop as well as a zucchini. Um, so we made those rows across the cover crop strips. So the cover crop strips went north to south. The vegetable beds went east to west. Uh, so each row covered each cover crop twice. So we had in total six replicates as far as the previous cover crop treatment. Um, the crops did really well. Um, you know, we didn't see, uh, we didn't fumigate nothing, um, and we had a really good stand there, good yields. This table gives you the nematode infection and the yield for both tomato and zucchini. Um, you can see we did get some decent galling, um, about six, which is about 60% root galls, uh, the highest. Um, so the lowest root galls uh, we found in the sun hemp and the southern pea, the cow peas as well. So again, although the cow peas did go up, it didn't look like they allowed much reproduction of, of these root knot nematodes in our field. Uh, we didn't see any significant difference with um, 
uh, in terms of yield, we had really good yields, um, but the sun hemp, at least numerically, came out as the highest yield uh, in, in this trial. Interestingly, we did see very uh, low gall ratings in the zucchini squash. Uh, the yields were also very good, no significant difference. Um, but typically, uh, cucurbits are considered good hosts for root nut nematodes, so, um, so we just we decided to do a little side trial in this field where we um, planted some different eucurbit types. We had cucumber, squash, zucchini, we had some different cultivars for each the seed we had available. Um, and interestingly, zucchini and squash seem to be uh, much less of a host for root nut than cucumber is. We've noticed this before in field trials. And uh, although squash and zucchini are often good hosts to root nut, they're not as consistently a good host as cucumber is. So maybe there are more root nut species, specific differences with squash and zucchini is definitely something uh, we need to look more into. Um, and hopefully we'll do that in the next year. Uh, quickly, a few uh, tomato trials we did in the past where we were looking at nimets, uh, fluent sulfone and non-fumigant nematicide. It's been around several years now. We did these trials with Sanjay Shukla from Markley and Joe Noling. Uh, from Lake Alfred, now retired. These were really large plot trials. Um, we did a trial in Immokalee where we compared the Piclor 60 standard, so this is chloropicrin plus uh, a telone, uh, compared it with the chloropicrin plus Nimitz treatment. And we didn't get a lot of galling there. The water tables, the high water tables in Immokalee usually um, you know, don't, don't allow such high nematode infection that we get in this area. Um, so fairly low gall ratings, but the pick look name, it's really look, uh, you know, good uh, and, and better than the pick or 60 in this trial. Uh, we did another trial nearer to our center in Parish, deep sand soils, where you typically get more root nut damage. Um, we had the same treatments and we also had a Nimitz by itself, so a non-fumigant treatment and a, a, a control, an untreated control. Here you see the gall ratings at mid-season and end of season and you know, all the treatments reduced the gall ratings, but again, the pick plus Nimitz kind of stood out as the best treatment. The Nimitz itself was comparable to the Piclor 60 uh, uh, nematicide standard fumigant. The crops looked really good. We didn't see a difference in vigor or, or, uh, or yield in these trials. Uh, next, a few cucurbit trials we did in spring 2019. Uh, one was a squash double crop on strawberries, the picture on the right, um, and then a cucumber trial on new beds uh, on the left. Different nematodes. Uh, in the cucumber, we had the Javanese, which is typically the nematode or one of the species you will get in vegetables. The northern root nut nematode is the only root nut nematode we find in strawberries, but it will also affect vegetables. You can see some of the stunted zucchini plants already in the in the on the right there um, because of nematode infection we already saw galls on the roots there so here um, it was basically a rescue treatment our applications were done two to three weeks after planting and the treatments we applied were we had vellum we had vidate we had magistine which is biological and then we had cocktails or mixtures of uh, the different nematicides but we reduced the rates by half uh, for the mixtures so this is the nematode soil counts are early in the season, March, April. So the soil is still pretty cool and you see pretty high counts for hapla in the squash. And we do get a reduction when we apply the vellum and the vellum plus phytate. We didn't see much with the other treatment, but for the cucumber trial, the Javanese root nut nematode, the populations are still pretty low. Part of that is because with this field was also fumigated, but typically this early in the season, Hapla, which prefers the cooler soils, tends to have the much higher populations compared to the Javanese, which is more of a tropical root nut nematode. Late season, it looks just the opposite. Um, this is late May or mid mid May, I would say. Much warmer soil. Now the hapla, the blue bars, are all very low. We still get a little bit of reduction with the vellum phytate mix, but even in the check, you know, the populations are, are really low. So this is just natural reduction because of the warmth, this nematode is just not so active anymore. Just the opposite with the Javanese where you got really high populations 
at this point. And uh, we do get some effect of some of the nematicide. The Vellum Majesty cocktail actually looks to be the best treatment here. This is the root gall ratings for this trial. And, and we didn't see any effect of the nematicides at this point on the galls. But what I just want to point out here is the high gall ratings for Javanica, the low gall ratings for Hapla. So Javanica is really the more damaging nematodes uh, for your cucurbits in our area. Then in spring 2020, last year, we did uh, another double crop, zucchini double crop. After strawberry, again, we had the northern root net nematode. And very similar, you get very high counts pre-plant early in the season here of Hapla when the soils are cool. At the end of the season, the population naturally declines, right? But you still see an effect of the nematicide in this case. So we had some different treatments, Vellum Vitae, Majesty, we had a combination. Promax is another biological. Uh, and, you know, all the treatments in this case uh, actually look pretty good. This is the gall ratings. Uh, we had a really good crop, so there's really no, no damage of, of, of this hapla. And we did see some reduction with the vellum vitate and the vitate plus magistine in terms of galls. So um, hapla can cause a lot of damage to those double crops, but as soon as, as the soil warms up, the crop often recovers. So applying a matocyte as you plant is, is, is often enough to, to save your crop when you're dealing with this type of nematode. Very briefly, um, since last year, we have a uh, new organic certified research field at the Gulf Coast. This is the second year uh, we're doing organic strawberry trials. Uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit of data from last year where we evaluated different cultivars, where we looked at transplant heat treatments. We used Natalia Perez's plant sauna that she's been working with to control certain pathogens that come with the transplants. We know certain nematodes can come with the transplants as well. So we wanted to look at the efficacy of that sauna for nematodes as well. Uh, we looked at some organic nematocytes. I listed them there. Uh, we did. We had very low nematode pressure in this field. This was a new field. You know, it had ne never been cropped before, as far as I know. Um, we had not a lot of nematodes, so we couldn't say much about the effect of the nematocytes. We did see some interesting differences in terms of varieties. So uh, in the nematocyte trial, overall, the brilliance uh, yielded significantly better than the beauty. Uh, in the STEAM, the transplant heat treatment, STEAM treatment trial, we saw the same thing. Again, the brilliance you know, looked better than the beauty. We had sensation in there as well, uh, which was kind of in between. Uh, but interestingly also, although the difference was not significant, we did see, um, you know, a consistently higher numerical yield uh, in the steam when we use the steam transplant. So steam treatment may be an option, especially for organic growers. It's one of the few things, uh, you know, they, they can do. So this may be an option for those growers in the future. And that's all I had. Thanks to my lab. Thanks to the Gulf Coast Farm Crew and the administration staff for all their support. And uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I've listed my email there. We have a website and uh, I listed some older pictures of my lab. We need to update because there's always a big turnover. But thank you for your attention.